right, we are good to go. Let's pretend like this is the first time that we're doing this. Hello, everybody. What's up? And welcome back to Unhinged with Chris Clemens. You guessed it. I am Chris Clemens. However, I am not alone today because we have former but always a countess, housewife pioneer, and cabaret diva Luann De La Seps. How are you? Hi, Chris. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Yeah, no. You feeling Giovanni? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you feeling Giovanni? <laughs> oh, we're already getting a song. I'm obsessed with this. Now, if a lot of you guys, for some reason, don't know, um, Luann was one of the OG Real Housewives of New Yorkers. And you were like one of the only, I think, one of two women on it for like the entire run until they did like the, you know, floppy recast. But. <laughs> Do you ever go back and watch it? Or like, when was the last time you watched Roni? You know, it's been it's been a while. I'm not a big reminiscer, but I do know that it's there, which is so cool. It's like a living photo album of my life. Um, you know, like that house I had in the Hamptons doesn't exist anymore. I mean, the property got bought. They knocked down the house, built a new house. Um, wow. So I know. So it's it's really great to have that. I mean, Rosie, remember Rosie the nanny? Yeah, Rosanna passed away, <gasps> right? I know. So I've got, you know, this this um, living photo album, but, you know, I don't go back and watch it a lot, but I know it's there. So that yeah. that's comforting. Yeah. Now, you were introduced on Roni as Countess Luanne de Lesseps. What was, like, before the show started airing, like, what was your life as a countess like? Like, what was, like, the day-to-day of it? <laughs> Well, the day to day was that, you know, uh, we lived in Switzerland. Uh, you know, I, I used to work for Italian television, so I lived in Milan. Oh, that's amazing. And, you know, I grew up in Connecticut and I went to nursing school. Um, so I was a nurse and then I got scouted to be a model in New York. But um, one of the reasons why I le- left to go to New York, um, besides just the modeling, was a broken heart. And, um, you know, I f- caught my boyfriend cheating on me and that got me that I was like, OK, now I'm moving to New York. And uh, that would change my life forever. Um, you know, then I, you know, heard the models talking about Milan and Paris. And I was like, I want to go to Milan and Paris. So I moved to Milan and ended up working for Italian television um, and met my husband skiing in Switzerland. So, wow, you know, I didn't really know what it was to be a countess. So, the, you know, people think I pulled the title out of a Cracker Jacks box, but the Deliceps actually... Uh, were responsible for the Suez Canal and the Panama Canal. Wow. Um, he was he, he was the uh, engineer behind it. And he was so important in France that he they, he was asked to present the Statue of Liberty to the United States. Um, so he was actually the one that handed it over. So, you know, uh, being a part of an aristocratic family like that, aristocratic family like that is um, pretty interesting. I mean, his father, uh, Alex's father, was ambassador to Monaco for 40 years. So, you know, Prince Albert would come over, um, you know, we were hobnobbing with, you know, the King of Greece and the Queen of Spain and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, and I'm just a girl from Connecticut. Yeah, no, that's wild. I was just thinking like. I had to learn as I went along. I mean, I didn't know what a countess was. I mean, what does that mean? Um, and really it's, um, it's a title that, um, is very important in Europe and, uh, my, you know, ex-husband still, you know, goes by Count Deliceps. And and he said to me, you know, you will always be my countess. So, you know, he's not remarried or anything like that. And we have two children together. And I was married for 17 years. So yeah, I'm keeping the title, girl. So (laughs) as you should, you worked for it, baby. I earned it, honey. Oh, my God. I mean, if I was ever if I was a count for a day, I mean, you would never hear the end of it. (laughs) I would be like, yep, Count Chris Clemens. That's right. That's right. Now, who was your favorite like cast group? Did you have one? Was there one that just after the season wrapped or even during the season, you were just like, oh, this is such a good group? Well, I got to say doing Crappy Lake with Sonia was really fantastic. I don't know if you saw that show. It's on Peacock. It's Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so Oh my god, of course I did. <laughs> so that was so that was awesome. You know, that was a dream job for me because here we are, you know, um helping people out in this small town and um it was so, you know, gratifying. You know, we did a lot of good stuff there. We, you know, did a whole I did an entire or we did an entire 
variety show with the townspeople. You know, we really connected to them. Yeah, and it's funny. Like, the show is very heartwarming, and it's also very funny. Yeah, it's comedy. And that was a really fun thing for me to do, you know, outside of Housewives. Good. Uh, yeah, no, it was very enjoyable to watch. Thank you. Thank you. Would you say Sonia is, like, the friendship you got out of Real Housewives of New York that's meant the most to you, like, off camera, or are there other ones? Well, you know, Sonia, I've known before the show. I mean, Sonia didn't come till season three because she wanted to see me and Ramona. Right. You know, going out and see how she was scared to do the show. And then, you know, we finally got her on the show. Um, but I would say I'm closest to Dorinda and besides Sonia. Uh, Dorinda and I are really tight. Mm -hmm. Cute. You guys like hang out and stuff still? We do. We do. And Ramona we called me last week and uh, Kelly and uh, Kelly finally took me to a Rangers game. <laughs> um, <laughs> you finally got that Rangers game. Girl. Finally got the Rangers game. And, um, you know, Kristen Tegman lives on the West Coast. Yeah, actually, she's coming to my cabaret show on Friday. Oh, my God. At the Wiltern. At the Wiltern on the 22nd this Friday, um, as well as the Beverly Hills Housewives are coming. Um, you know, Lance Bass is coming. I've got a lot of celebrities coming to the show, so I'm super excited. Yeah. Excuse uh, me. I know. I'm excited that they're coming and that they, they love the show. A lot of them have seen my show. Lance Bass used to be in my show, actually, because I used to have guests in the show. Yeah. Wow. Being on Housewives, specifically in New York, for like the entire run, what was like the worst thing a housewife has done to you? And what was the best or nicest or most meaningful thing a housewife has done to you? Mm. I would say the worst thing uh, definitely was Bethany showing me that picture of Tom. Now, she makes a really good reality star because she wasn't going to tell me about it first. But she doesn't make a good friend. Right? Yeah, no, that one translated both the time, space, and the camera. <laughs> right? And I think that one of the best moments for me was singing with Natalie Cole. Oh, my God. For Jacques and I for our anniversary on that boat. The night Ramona pretended to be pregnant in the bathroom at 60. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You would love my cavalry so much, darling. You would just oh die because I, I talk about all this stuff, you know. Oh, my God. I got to come to it. You have to come. Would you have one last fight with Bethany? Like, Oh, I would love it. Bring her on. What would you say? Like, well, you know, I think Bethany has a hero complex. So she, she, it's, she goes in to save the day, but it's really about her. Well, yeah, no, it's, I, that's definitely the sense I get. Are you aware of her like TikTok presence? Yes. What was she doing? I mean, the seafood pulling apart these, it's like crazy sh stuff she's doing on TikTok. No, it's definitely, um, it's very interesting. <laughs> it's off. There's something off there, right? <laughs> Have you practiced like one final blowout with her? Like sometimes when I'm pissed at people, I'll be like walking around my kitchen and I'll be like, that's a good line. Save that for later. <laughs> <laughs> I do it in my cabaret. Uh, okay. Well, we'll have to come and see the cabaret. You're going to have to come and see that, darling, to get all those lines. I can tell you because I've got a lot of good singers. Oh, my God. I mean, I'm about to literally go look at flights right now. <laughs> I'm telling you, my show, it's 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 cabaret meets comedy meets pop culture, meets fashion show. Because you can bet there's going to be a lot of Giovanni dresses. <laughs> I'm, I'm obsessed. I mean, I'm ready to book a flight like right now. Honey, you got to come. You got to come. We're going to do a quick uh, rapid fire question okay. uh, in the honor of Denise Richards. And it's okay. a game called Bravo, Bravo, fucking Bravo. She's coming. Denise is Stop. coming to the show. I'm yeah. dead. <laughs> All the Beverly Hills girls are going. Oh my God. Hopefully she doesn't scream bravo, bravo, fucking bravo during it. <laughs> no. But I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions and you are going to say bravo, bravo, fucking bravo to one of them that you don't want to answer. Okay. All right. As a gay icon, which city has the best gays? In New York City. Okay, I feel like you're a little biased. Um, <laughs> no, which city has the worst gays? <laughs> oh God. Um, I don't know. Let's see. Um, London. <laughs> I, I love that you really like thought about that. London, <laughs> London, darling. Or maybe I shouldn't say I shouldn't say London because I'm doing. You're the heading hoopla. there next. I know. <laughs> let's, I do like... let's do Paris. <laughs> let's okay, do Paris. Okay, Paris. Because there is there really is no bad gay city. 
No, I... Is this a trick question? No, I'm really not... This is bravo, bravo, fucking bravo. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my God, you're using it this early. No, it was just meant to be a fun question. Okay. Um, now that you're sober, which uh, New York housewife cast members drinking concerned you the most? Well, I'm... You know, if you saw Ultimate Girls Trip, I say to the girls, um, I drink on occasion and this is an occasion. So I wouldn't call myself sober because I do drink on occasion. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So what was the question? <laughs> Um, whose New York uh, <laughs> castmates drinking concerned you the most? Oh, well, there was a, certainly a point when D <laughs> or Sonia falling over at the table, you know, numerous times. I have to be the snatch guard. I mean, she's, she's, you know, she forgets her hanky pankies all the time, you know. No, you guys really could be between them doing that and you falling into a bush. I mean, you guys <laughs> could really be professional stunt doubles, I feel, at this point. <laughs> well, we are, you know, like... I was talking about this earlier, you know, like Atlanta doesn't really drink much. These girls don't drink a lot. You know, New York is, we, we like to party in New York. Yeah, you guys, I mean, that's the whole point of New York is it's so fun. And like, you've got to let loose. It's the best place to get drunk. I mean, oh my God. You can just take an Uber or taxi. <laughs> Literally. Ugh, it's the best. No driving involved. <laughs> Which of your exes was the worst in bed? None of them were bad in bed. <laughs> That's a good answer. I feel like so many people will throw one of their like exes under the bus and it's like, then why were you putting up with it for so long? Right? No, I, you know, I have to say I've been very lucky in the sex department. I wish I could say the same. Please <laughs> give us some tips. <laughs> I mean, literally. I do. Um, uh, Countess Lou's tips on dating in the show, which is hysterical. You know, the school bell rings, classes in session, children. <laughs> And we do tips on dating because I, I'm always in trouble with the guy, right? First of all, it's either a pirate or, you know, or the one night stand. And I'm like, cool to be cool. Don't be like all uncool. I just had some guys over here for God's sake, you know? <laughs> so what was the question again? Um, no, we were just um, talking about your exes being the worst and none of them being the worst. Because, no, no. Yeah, no. I feel like we could all use some tips from you. Now, the best was Jacques. Okay. I was going to ask the best, and then I was like, I want to switch it up. Which one was the worst? <laughs> now, finally, do you think you have a better voice than Erica Jane? Um, I think we have different voices. What a diplomatic answer. Well, listen, she listen, she did Chicago, right? I mean, that's, that's something, you know? Uh, I haven't seen her perform, so it's hard for me to say. Yeah. And I didn't see her in Chicago. And it's so funny. I think you guys have such not similar songs, but like the expensive to be me and money can't buy you class. That juxtaposition is so <laughs> like funny to me. <laughs> oh, wait till you hear Mary F. Kill, my new song coming out on Friday drops. Ah, oh my God. Are you debuting it at the Wiltern? I am debuting it at the Wiltern. Oh my God. Okay, fine. I will book a flight right after this. Okay. Believe me, you don't want to miss it. I No, I'm telling you, I don't. <laughs> now, being on tour and you saying that, like, drinking, you drink for, like, a moment. Like, doing shows I, as a stand-up comedian, I find that, like, alcohol and weed help so much with, like, nerves and everything. Like, how do you, how does touring interfere with that? Um, well, I, I don't drink before I perform or you know, I, alcohol doesn't work for me like that, you know? Gotcha. Um, in, in fact, I become forgetful, you know, if I drink, I like have a brain farked and it's like, you know, I can't remember something. So I don't, I don't drink definitely before I perform. Sometimes I'll go after shows. Sure. Um, I do meet and greets after my shows also. So, you know, I finish late, you know, and by the time I shower and wind down and get to bed, it's two o'clock in the morning already. So, um, so being on the road is not party, party, party. It's cabaret, 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 you know, cabaret, gotcha. cabaret is my cabernet. Don't forget. You are just, I can't escape the party scene. Hell with countess. Now I'm queen. <laughs> you are an endless, like just one line machine. It's, <laughs> it's really a talent and a gift. <laughs> Thank you. Well, why do you think I've been on reality TV for so long? No, I, it really makes sense, but it just never hit me until like right now. I'm like, God damn. Right. And crappy league too. That's off. Bethany the... got all the praise for her one liners. Yeah, I'm like, I, yeah, yeah. I don't think credit was given where it was due. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Thank you. How would you describe your show F Mary kill in five words or less for the people? Five words or less. Well, I think I said it, which is it's cabaret meets 
uh, comedy meets pop culture meets fashion show. So how I do my show is I pick the music that I love. And, and this show in particular is all about love, love gained, love lost, you know, um, it, it broken hearts, et cetera. You know, God knows you've seen me get married, divorced, get married again, get divorced again. You know, I'm always in trouble with a guy, like I said. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I, so I pick the music I love and then I figure out how to back into the song choice, which is a story that leads to the song. Because that's what Cabaret is really about. It's a personal story about me and my journey and why I picked that song and why I love that song. Yeah. So, and, and you know, the, the 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 riot date that went you know that went well actually i think i've only heard of two people say that a riot date went well and they're dating that's it exactly <laughs> that's what i'm saying so so it really starts like that the song choice then the story and then it's the giovanni dress now what dress am i going to wear to go move around the stage singing that song so that's how i do my show gotcha um i've i've been inspired by my fans so I didn't know what Mary F. Kill was. First of all, it's F. Mary Kill, and I got it backwards. So now I own MaryFKill.com. <laughs> I did that by accident. That was a happy accident. Listen, honestly, it's more unique. Right. And it's be better for a song. Mary F. Kill. Oh, should I play you a snippet? Oh, my God. Play us a snippet. So I got inspired. I didn't know what this game until I started doing cabaret. And every what? single show, I do a Q&A with my audience. And I got asked every single show, and I'm talking about everyone, and I've done hundreds now because I've been doing cabaret since 2018, and it, every single time. So I said, oh, my God, that's my next show, Mary F. Kill. I love it. Yeah, so this is the song. Can you hear that? No, I cannot. I can't hear it. Oh, you can't? <laughs> no. Where can I put it? Oh. You hear it now? No, I think that's into a headphone. I think you need to put it towards wherever the computer is or turn it up. Oh. They can't go that loud. It's on my, my phone. You know what? I'll play a snippet and you'll, they'll keep it for you and then you'll incorporate it, right? Perfect. Anyway, so my inspiration is really comes from my fans for the song. Um, so, you know, I owe, I owe it all to them. My inspiration is always from the life that I'm leading, like money can't buy you class. I mean, I wrote a book on etiquette. That's where that came from. I met the producer and he goes, what do you want to sing about? I go, I don't really know. And I go, but I wrote a book and I hand it to him and he goes, money can't buy you class. Elegance is learned. He's like, I got you. <laughs> right. But, and we wrote it together, you know? And, um, so, and then, it, then it was chic say la vie. Which is iconic. When every day you're living in is featured on TV. Confident and cool. Passion is the key. You know what I mean? So that went in feeling Giovanni. When Dorinda going, Giovanni. Jo in her jealous rage, Giovanni, Giovanni. And so I wrote Giovanni, you know, and... Uh, uh, the girl code that comes from be cool. Don't be like all oh, uncle. You broke the girl code. You know, I'm a grown woman. I can sleep with whoever. I so all my music really is inspired by what's going on around me and including my fans. Yeah. I love that. And honestly, I, you have created hit after hit. <laughs> Truly. It's like each one is so iconic in its own way that it's like you sitting there describing. I'm like, Oh my God. Yeah, like... Do you know Viva La Diva? That one is, you know, that one's... You should see Viva La Diva. That one's written by Desmond Child, who wrote Live in the Vita Loca and Live in on a Prayer. Oh, well, excuse me. And Mary F. Kill is... I'm working with Bruce Roberts, who's a producer, who's worked with Whitney Houston and all the greatest. So I'm wow. so lucky I get to work with such icons in the business. And, you know, my director is Richard J. Alexander of my cabaret shows. He directs... Kristen Chenoweth, he directed Bette Midler, Barbara, Barbara Streisand presently. Um, and so he came to my show and he goes, Countess, I got to tell you, I came here not expecting very much from you. And you fucking blew my mind. First of all, you're funny, you can sing, and you wear a dress like no woman I've ever seen. You're going to be a big star. Let me find you an agent. Wow. And that's how I started cabaret touring. Well, first how I started the idea of cabaret is... A friend of mine said to me, he said, you know what, Luann, you love to sing for your friends, as you've seen on The Housewives. Happy birthday to you. 
Uh, you love to tell jokes and you love to host parties. You're a fucking cabaret star. I was like, oh, yeah, maybe I am. No, it really makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Like, yeah. it really, especially when you were describing your show, I feel like incorporating all of those different pillars is just so natural for you to do. Right. Yeah. Like, that feels like it just makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I, you know, it's my song choices. I write it myself. You know, it's it's all me, and it's all a part of my past. You know, I show clips from the show. I have, I'm covering flowers. Miley Cyrus's team reached out and said, would you come to the Grammy party and surprise her? Stop. I swear to God. And I Is was Miley going to make a little guest appearance at the Wiltern? I think she might show up. Shut up. Yeah, so anyway, so... I couldn't go because I was in rehearsal in New York for Mary F. Kill. So, and and they're like, you know what? She might not win. And then it might not happen. So I didn't go, but God, I wish I did. Damn it. Because she won that Grammy. I'm so proud of her. I would have pushed rehearsals. I would have been like, one, two, three, go. Believe me, that's one regret I do have in life. What are some other ones? <laughs> well, geez, I don't have a lot of regrets. I don't live in regret, you know? I think that's wise. Yeah, I really don't. You know, because then I feel like you just end up living in the past the whole time. Exactly. I try to live as much as I can in the present. Now, I have some questions from the Unhinged Patreon. Okay. The first one is, funny enough, F. Mary Kill, <laughs> Ramona, Bethany, and Dorinda. Well, I'm going to marry Dorinda because I want to live at Bluestone Manor with her. Absolutely. And she's wealthy. <laughs> you slide in and she's wealthy. <laughs> and she's wealthy. Um, I'm going to actually, I'm going to, I'm going to show Ramona a good time and, and give her a good F. Woo. Yeehaw. I'm going to fuck Ramona and I'm going to kill Bethany, obviously. Yeah, no, that one wasn't terribly shocking. <laughs> I didn't realize you were so close to Ramona as you are. Well, listen, if you gave me three options, she was the only option. <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant outside the game. No, I figured the uh, ranking of that. No, I, you know, first of all, I love Ramona. I do. Because I, she's like family now. Yeah. Oh, my God. After everything you guys have been through, I'm sure. Exactly. It's like it's like a relative you never get to see. And then when you see them, it's like, oh, my God. You know, it's like, yeah. it's like, it really, it's like fam, it's my discombobulated housewives family. It's, you know, that's really, really sweet. <laughs> um, Taylor from Patreon asks, what's the tea with her and Joe Bradley from Southern Hospitality? I emojis. Uh, well, listen, we had a lot of chemistry. That's for true. And of course that Danielle followed him to my house. Um, uh. <laughs> she, <laughs> it, but I had some people over. So he did not stay, but he did come over to my place. Okay. You can leave the rest to your imaginations, people. That's right. Correct. <laughs> and, and guess what? Mystery is good. People don't leave enough, enough mystery. You know, people are always telling everything about themselves to everybody. We don't need to know everything, you know? I agree with that. I think privacy is like the ultimate luxury and having things that are just for you or you and someone else. Mm. Exactly. Now, Chloe W. asks, how do I know if breaking up with my boyfriend is the right decision? Well, it's called gut instinct. You know, we have a lot more nerve endings and um, neurons in our stomachs than we do in our in our brain. OK, nursing school. Well, this is more spirituality and more Joe Dispenza. I don't know if you know who Joe Dispenza is, but or, or um, Deepak Chopra. Deepak Chopra actually said yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, and it's true. There's more neurons in your in your tummy than there are in your head. So meaning that our gut, that's why it's called gut instinct. Yeah. It tells you what to do. And then we go here and this is a dangerous place. This is where the ego comes in. Jealousy, all oh, those a scary scary place. A scary place. So go with your gut. Go with your gut. I think that's a very fair thing. Now, Jack from Patreon asks, were you always a model or did you have an ugly face? Oh, I had an ugly, I had an ugly face. I hated being a teenager. I, I, you know what I used to say? I'd rather go to jail than, than be a teenager again. And that happened. <laughs> <laughs> Would you still pick jail over a teenager? Yes. <laughs> Any day. I hated being a teenager. Um, I was taller than all the boys. I was kind of chubby. 
I didn't think I was pretty. I didn't have a lot of self-confidence. And then I went to nursing school and I learned quickly that so much, so many other people are worse off than I was. Yeah. You know, when I was a nurse, you know, I, I worked actually on a traumatic brain injury unit with teens. Wow. From car accidents. Oh my God. I feel like you've lived a million lives. <laughs> I've lived a million. Li I was able to walk out, get in my car and drive away. Now that's something they couldn't do. Yeah. So, you know what? I just, after that, I was just blessed to be alive and it built my confidence up that. And then of course, being a model, um, you know, you got a lot of rejection, so you got to get a thick skin. You know what I mean? It's like, it's not, don't take it personally. It's just, you're not right for that job, but you get the next one. If you don't think you're great, nobody else will. So you have to believe. Absolutely. Confidence is like so key. Confidence is key. Passion is the key. Confidence is key. You know, I, t this is all part of my music. I love it. If you listen to the lyrics. Yeah. Now, something we do on this podcast is um, our listeners email in based off of different prompts. And um, some of our unhinged citizens have pulled through. Um, now, your homework for next episode is to send an email to unhingedwithchrisclemens at gmail.com with what you would spend your money on if you won the lottery. However, this week, we are answering last week's prompt, which was send us some hot hometown gossip. We want to we wanna know. And um, I have never received responses of such volume or quantity or quality in my life. Like I was shook. Everybody's got some hometown gossip. <laughs> okay, sure. Up first, we have an email that was titled youth pastor and pro-life teacher is an undercover pedo. At my private Catholic high school, there was theology teacher who was apparently openly anti-gay. He outright bullied any kid that was different or part of the LGBTQ plus community and would tell them they are going to hell. He also hated women and was the teacher slash leader of the pro-life group. He was in charge of taking hundreds of students to Washington, D.C. for the March for Life rally every year. He was also a youth pastor. Well... In 2021, I think it was, a bunch of kids in my hometown formed a group and basically did their own version of To Catch a Predator. Lo and behold, they caught this man at a local McDonald's trying to link up with a 15-year-old boy he met on Grindr for a BJ. They caught the whole thing on camera and he was arrested. <gasps> Several former students then came forward to share that he had been doing this for years. His wife divorced him. He is now a registered sex offender. I guess we all know who is really going to hell. Amen. Oh, wow. Can you, like, getting arrested in a McDonald's parking lot? Wow. It's already bad enough having indigestion from the food in a McDonald's parking lot. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, he got what he deserved, darling. He got what he deserved. Oh, a hundred percent. And it's it's always the youth pastors. I guess I shouldn't say always, but God. Yeah, or the Catholic Church. Yeah. Don't even mm, don't uh. even get me started. Every day there's a new headline that isn't a drag queen doing these acts. So You know what I was watching? It was um Diana's brother who went to boarding school as an eight year old child. You know, it, all those boarding schools also in England. Yeah. You know, the amount of emails I saw that were teachers who wow. were like doing stuff with uh, like, oh, it was. Yeah, I was really trying to find a variety of these. And a lot of them were dark, dark. That's dark. Email number two is called Hometown Tea. Just a quick preface, I'm from a very small city in Canada, Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. It's the kind of place where everyone knows everything about anyone. Mm. This was a few years ago, but a girl that I went to elementary school with was dating a guy that was easily 10 years older than her. He was your run-of-the-mill white ginger military man. Old, boring, you get it. Anyways, this girl was always really nasty when she genuinely had no right to be. Her smell could make your eyes water. <laughs> oh. That little read is crazy. <laughs> so her and this guy were posting each other all over Instagram, but one night she apparently went to the bar and hooked up with someone else and ended up pregnant. She told military man that she was pregnant and that the baby was his. Little did she know he couldn't father children and they broke up. Mm. Nine months later, the baby came out half black. She was not black. So I really don't know how she was planning to pull that one off. Anyways, that was a few years ago and she just got engaged to her boyfriend of five months who resides in my Tinder likes. <laughs> what? 
who resides in the Tenderlax. Oh my God. Did Berlin, Connecticut have like some hot hometown gossip? Um, yeah. Or was it pretty like run of the mill or normal? No, no, no. So I was, <laughs> I used to, before I went to nursing school, I was a nurse's aide. Okay. And I used to babysit for a family and Ada was the um, recreational director at the rest home, you know, of activities. And I used to babysit for her and her family. And her husband was very quiet and never said very much. And Ada was like a very big woman, and very kind of brash. And um, and anyway, so I used to babysit for them once in a while. And I always thought they were had this strange relationship. Anyway, so I go to work one day at the rest home and I pull up and there's police cars everywhere. I'm like, what's happening? And they found Ada down the street, strangled in her car. And he left her at a bar. So he strangled her, put her in the car, and left her at a bar in the parking lot to make it look like somebody in the bar had strangled her. Had done her. it. And he got arrested for strangling his wife. Oh. And he was walking around town, you know, while this whole thing was happening and was not he was just under that's the scariest part to think about he was under suspicion but then they found him guilty holy shit i know so you see see berlin connecticut has its fair share of you know yeah no someone from my town it was like a famous story where i think we talked about it on the podcast before but he like cut up his girlfriend and put her in a cooler and then his brother drove i don't know it was the capano story i don't know if you know of that no, but no. oh my god it was, it's wild just mm. it's kind of like comforting knowing that just like every in every little corner of everywhere like i heard i read stories from serbia switzerland like i mean it was just every little corner everybody's got there's scandals everywhere darling yeah scandals everywhere and then the last email reads, when I was in junior high, there was a girl in the grade above me who I was pretty good friends with. The summer before my freshman year of high school, it was announced all over town that she got diagnosed with leukemia. The whole town rallied behind her and her family. We sold bracelets, made t-shirts, and she was even nominated for homecoming court. Hmm. She cut her hair, seemed quiet at school, but something was just off. Rumors were spreading all over school that she wasn't actually sick. The week after she was on homecoming court, we never saw her again. She wasn't in treatment, but she moved to a different town. Turns out her family faked her having a diagnosis, coerced her into going along with the fake diagnosis, and once the town found out, they packed everything up and moved. Turns out her, her parents are both con artists. Oh, my God. That's like some Gypsy Rose shit right yeah, there. Yeah, totally. Oh, my God. That like, was just, it just reminded me of that story, yeah. Mm. Isn't that, have you met Gypsy Rose? mm, -mm. I don't know why I would love to like hear a podcast episode between you and Gypsy Rose. I don't know why. <laughs> it just seems like it would be chaotic. And I'm like yeah. kind of obsessed with the idea. Uh, <laughs> I'd be down. I'd be down. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god now before we go i want to read one of the reviews that one of you guys left for the podcast and it was titled literally perfect but i liked it because it just was a very genuine review you said you're too funny and you make the vibe of your episode so cozy like it never feels like you're just some influencer making these to get paid like you come off much more invested in your fans than that i don't know how to explain it no well, I'm not getting paid for every one of these. It's anytime there's an ad, girl, I'm getting paid. Otherwise, <laughs> just for fucking shits and giggles and for cool opportunities like this. I got to sit down and talk to Luam for a, an hour. I know. It's so much fun. It was just so much fun. I enjoy. I could talk to you all day. I know. Same. Maybe <laughs> I'll come. Maybe I'll come to the show this week. Who knows? I would love that. Oh, my God. Just let, let us know. I'm going to keep a seat for you, darling. Oh, Okay, better be front row. That's all I'm going to say. Right, right next to Lance Bass. <laughs> Honestly, I'm down. Now, before we go, is there anything you want to plug? Uh, people can get tickets at CountessLuann.com for all my shows. Um, and I'll be in Modesto. I'll be in Sacramento coming up in California in April. So check out the dates. And um, and then I'm off to England for the very first time across the pond. And, and please check out my new song, which is being released this Friday, March 22nd, Mary F. Kill. 
Now I'm going to go record the Unhinged after show over on Patreon.com slash Chris Clemens. I will see you guys there, and I will see you next week for another episode. Bye! Bye.